Breaking news here at 5 o'clock. A large fire has broken out. This is in the southwest part of the valley near Cimarron, just outside the 215 Beltway. You can see the smoke and the flames from just about every part of the valley. And it's just an enormous fireball there. You're seeing another a view there, that huge plume of smoke. People stopping right there on the 215. Again, right near a Durango in the 215. We are staying on top of this. Several crews responding to this fire will keep you posted throughout the afternoon. And also breaking right now, sources telling us three young people were shot in North Las Vegas. We thank you for joining us at 5. I'm Denise Feldes. I'm David Charns in for Brian. Sources telling us one shooting victim has died. This is all happening just before 3 o'clock on West Centennial Parkway near Commerce Street. We have team coverage for you tonight. 8 News Now reporter Brian Will is standing by, but we begin with reporter Madison Kimbrough. Madison? Yeah, currently the eastbound and southbound lanes on Centennial Parkway are blocked off. They have been for about an hour now. Take a look beside me. As you can see, there are about 10 North Las Vegas police cars on scene. Uh, it's still unclear what led up to the shooting and who was involved, but as you all mentioned, three people were shot. One is now dead. Of course, keep it here on 8 News Now for the latest details as we have team coverage coming up uh, very soon here. But again, in North Las Vegas, three people were shot. Uh, one person is now dead. Sending it to Brian. Yeah, Madison, we are a few blocks west of you, and it's still closed over where we're at. There's still some police presence here in a very active scene. You can see some people behind me. There was quite a few officers there earlier, a little bit by some cones on the ground here, but police tape is up, so if you're trying to get back to your house in this neighborhood, a lot of it is blocked up all the way to Reeb Street, and it's been like this for at least the last hour or so since we've got here, and it could be possibly extension of that scene or even a second scene. We don't know just yet, but keep you here on Channel 8, and we'll keep you involved. Live in 8 News Now, Brian Will. So again, this is a developing story. Again, we have learned that at least one teenager has died. We will continue to update you both on air and online at 8newsnow.com. More breaking news right now. A grand jury indicting a mother after police say they found her one-year-old child dead and an eight-year-old locked in a bedroom. That child reportedly held in captivity for a year. That is according to documents we obtained today. And these are just some of the photos the ADU's now investigators obtained from inside that South Valley home. Detectives say four children lived there, including a 15 year old. None of them went to school, and the mother reportedly left the children alone for days at a time. 37 year old Felina D's facing seven counts of child abuse. The baby's cause and manner of death pending right now, and we've also learned CPS received two reports about the family before that child's death. And even more breaking news right now from the 8 News Now investigator. Sources say Metro Police arrested a man who allegedly made threats about killing people at the Golden Knights Parade. That arrest happening after police took that man to a hospital. The hospital then released him, and the man then allegedly made threats about ramming a vehicle into the crowd. Now, thankfully, nothing happened. This is 31-year-old Anthony Zaccaro, police taking him into custody hours before the parade began Saturday morning. Long waits and not enough space. Clark County just grilling the Animal Foundation about its current operations. Now the foundation coming back with a proposed solution, but that solution could cost taxpayers more than a half million dollars a year. 8 News Now reporter Ryan Matthey joining us in the newsroom with how commissioners are responding to that request. Ryan? Hey there, Denise. Yeah, unlike other shelters and rescues here in the Valley, the Animal Foundation is the only one partially funded by Clark County. The CEO says they do not have enough money or resources to respond to those concerns, but they do have a plan to fix them that some commissioners say is not what they asked for. CAF is demanding more funds to divert more animals. You could always require more accountability. Again, we're back here to dysfunctional operations continuing. The Clark County Animal Rescue say they're suffocating, blaming breeders and other owners who are doing the unthinkable. They're letting them off in the desert. They're just abandoning their animals. But as volunteers like Tracy Paz says, the municipal animal shelter isn't helping much. We believe it's mismanagement. We don't believe that money is going to solve what's going on over there. We have a plan to onboard and train and stand up the call center. And Tuesday, Animal Foundation CEO Hillary Gray returned to Clark County Commissioners at their request with a plan. 
It involves hiring more staff within the foundation and others for a new call center. She models that center off one in Arizona that she says has reversed the same problems experienced a state over. Through it, she says non-emergency appointment wait times will decrease, owner surrender intakes will lower, and shelter to owner returns will increase. An annual cost, the report lists at nearly $600,000. If we can um, triage a lot of these calls where they're not real emergencies, not have those in the appointment system, we're going to have more capacity for more daily appointments, but also to take those emergencies right away. We are sinking. And while some county commissioners seem receptive, others remain skeptical that those goals match these plans. I asked for a 30, 60, 90 day plan, and we don't, we still don't have that. Funding and those jobs would be tied to the contract between Clark County and the foundation. So amendments to that contract are needed and they have to be approved by the county commissioners. Though because of the 4th of July holiday, their next meeting is not for another month. Reporting live in the newsroom, Ryan Matthey, A News Now. Ryan, thanks for that. So since this February, the Animal Foundation has gradually started receiving more and more animals every single month. So here's a look at some of the data from the foundation where you can see that trend of numbers going up since February. However, the number for this past month when compared to May of last year is about 10% lower. Still though, a lot of animals to take care of. You can find all of that data and see more on the story by following us on Facebook. All right, we are checking the conditions outside, not just for you, but that fire that's burning in the southwest part of the valley. Denise had just talked about it. It's around on the 215 and Buffalo, not on the 215, right near it. And as you can see, the thick black smoke indicates that it is still on fire. And of course, you can see fully engulfed here right now. Let's show you another tower cam. Can we go to the fast cam, guys? I wanted to show you that because there were cars that were kind of alongside the road earlier. Those cl uh, They actually closed that road down with good reason. See the smoke going on to the uh, the highway there. Lots of thick black smoke indicating again the fire still going. In fact, the flames were even higher earlier, but uh, as you can see, still burning quite a bit. So I want to take a look at the uh, current conditions outside and show you what we're seeing because humidity is only at 4%. But what we really have to watch is for those wind speeds because it has been breezy today. To yesterday were stronger winds. Today still though elevated winds in the teens. I'm still seeing gusts around that specific area in the southwest right around Durango Station. Uh, or right around uh, gusts around 20 to 25 miles per hour. So it's still a little breezy out there right now. And that's what we don't want. Winds kicking up the flames, right? Humidity though still very dry and it's very warm out there still at 91 degrees which is typical for this time of year. It's going to be warm even though we're below normal. But of course we're watching those wind speeds outside right now. Many of our neighborhoods in the low 90s to mid 90s. Notice I talked about those wind gusts are between 20 to 25 miles per hour. Locally higher here, but this is at Reed, not down in that southwest part of the valley. Also in Henderson, those winds around 25. We're seeing those uh, wind gusts around 25 like we talked about in the southwest. We'll continue to monitor that situation and also the wind speeds in your neighborhoods and show you what to expect for the rest of the night. All coming up in your most accurate forecast. Stay with us. All right, Ted, thanks for that. A Connecticut police officer pleading guilty to driving drunk in a rented Rolls Royce near the Las Vegas Strip, eventually crashing it and killing a passenger. It happened back in 2021. Metro police say 37-year-old Robert Ferraro lost control of that car. As a result, the crash killed 35-year-old officer Joshua Castellano, who was vacationing with Ferraro and two other officers. Ferraro signed that plea deal today during a video call to the court. His sentencing set for November. He faces between 2 to 20 years in prison. We are learning some new information about a deadly stabbing over the weekend. 29-year-old Robert Lara accused of killing his girlfriend Hunter Reyes on Sunday. According to his arrest report, Lara confessed to officers that Reyes was attempting to leave him when he stabbed her in front of their children. Lara, now charged with murder, will be in court again tomorrow. And this man accused in a deadly motel shooting two years ago, now facing an open murder charge. 32-year-old Brian Contreras is behind bars after his arrest earlier this month. According to the arrest report by Metro, a witness told detectives the shooting was intentional, and Contreras, a convicted felon, initially took off. During the investigation, police say witness statements and evidence indicated that he was the only person who could have fired the gun. 
Our area pretty busy with people moving in and moving out, more moving in, and with that, storage units come in handy for all that extra stuff. But as 8 News Now reporter Victoria Saha shares, one man claims he went to check on his things only to find there were some pretty unwelcome visitors. And first a warning, some of the images in this story may be hard to view. It was rain and rat poop. That's what Melvin Hodges says he found when he went to his storage unit. You just feel as though your things are going to be protected. It was Hodges' first visit to his unit at Town Storage near Rainbow and Dewey in six years. But rats getting up into your actual locker and just tearing up everything in there? Nah, it's, it's, it's just ridiculous. He was looking forward to finally moving his things to Illinois. I didn't feel comfortable with taking that. He says he would pay up to $130 a month for the last six years to the storage facility. But not once did anyone tell him there was a rat infestation. They continue to accept payments. We went over to Town Storage to get some answers. So I just finished talking to the new office manager here at Town Storage. He did tell me that there was a rat infestation three years ago. But since then, the problem's been fixed and there's been rat baits placed throughout the facility. He did tell me that it's up to each customer to frequently check on their storage unit to make sure the problem hasn't resurfaced. According to Life Storage Blog, here are some things you can do to make sure critters stay out of your storage unit. Pack items in plastic totes with airtight lids. Don't store food inside. Keep items elevated. Cover mattresses and furniture. And choose a storage facility that cares about pest control. Do your homework on the, on the facility. That was Victoria Saha reporting. Now, another tip, make sure your insurance on your storage unit covers rodent or pest infestations. Hodges did receive a check from his insurance for about $1,000, but says it really just wasn't enough to cover all the belongings that were damaged. We are keeping an eye on that fire that is burning in the southwest part of the valley, uh, roughly near uh, Cimarron in the 215. As we can see, we got a little bit of gray smoke. So, David, that might mean that they're getting a little bit of water on it. But this started about 15, 20 minutes ago. And, boy, it was a two-alarm fire. It was just it was a gulf. There were flames. You can still see them there in this live picture that we're seeing from our fast cam. So you see the freeway there. Looks like there isn't a lot of traffic. I don't think this is actually 215 we're seeing. I think we're seeing one of those side roads there on the right. But from what we can tell with our traffic cameras, there are a lot of backups as people are driving by. Again, this is happening in the southwest side of the valley right before you get to the bend with the big Ikea sign. But Denise, as you see the orange there, this is a large fire we believe at a building that is under construction there and it is causing just a lot of smoke in a scene for people there who are driving by you can see it from just about every part of the valley too yeah, so we'll, we'll keep an eye on it for you all right coming up next here at five o'clock we will continue to follow the other breaking news we're following this afternoon three young people shot one of them killed we'll have a live report plus educating our community we'll have a closer look at the struggles of refugees here in the valley on this world refugee day you're watching 8 News Now at 5. This portion of 8 News Now is sponsored by Pomponio Injury Law. Sanja loves to bake cupcakes or cookies, but her feet, they were throbbing. Then one day, I found a solution. Arch supports from the Good Feet store. Have foot pain? Good Feet could help. Come in for your free arch support fitting. To change your life. Show your love. Make her a Minden girl. The Richard Harris Law Firm has been fighting and winning for accident victims for over 40 years. Your brother told me you asked him for money again today. And your work called saying you've missed your last three shifts. Our marriage won't survive if you keep using. It's either us or drug use. It's your choice. Choose life. Choose Landmark Recovery. Visit LandmarkRecovery.com to learn more. Our school board trustees aren't dealing with the problem. 1,400 teaching positions are vacant in Las Vegas. 1,200 more teachers left Vegas in seven months. Our paychecks average $6,000 less than everyone else in Las Vegas. But the school board trustees made Superintendent Jara one of the highest paid in the country? The trustees have upside down priorities. There's a difference you can feel when you step into the showroom at Finley Honda Henderson. 
Our cars are beautiful, built to last, and our certified pre-owned inventory is one of the largest in the country. But the difference is our people. From the sales floor to the service department, we're focused on you because when you're the center of our attention, everybody wins. It may not be what you're used to, but we think it should be. Finley Honda Henderson in the Valley Auto Mall. Welcome to the difference. At Adam Cutner and Associates, people really do win. Injured, ask attorney Adam Cutner, 382 -0000, where winning is everything. Voted best law firm and best accident attorney in Las Vegas. One more week, the Great American RV Roadshow Super Sale has been extended. This is the first time ever at this location, and we're blowing out all remaining inventory. The Great American RV Roadshow Super Sale extended through Sunday at the Palace Station Hotel and Casino. Dr. Mehta knows pain. Oftentimes, I see patients with pain in their knees, their hips, their back, and it's actually coming from their feet. Her suggestion? It's as easy as going into a good feet store. Come in for your free arch support fitting. Over 8,000 episodes. Competitive gameplay and high scores. More than half a million clues. Look at this. We got a game going. Two hosts. Let's play Jeopardy. One Jeopardy. Tonight at 7 on 8 News Now. We are keeping an eye on that massive fire that is burning in the Southwest Valley. This is right off the Beltway, not too far from Cimarron and Durango. From some of the uh, pictures we're getting from our viewers, it appears, and we don't, don't have this confirmed, that this may be some sort of an apartment building that was under construction. That's certainly what it looks like from some of the photos we've seen. Today. And we're seeing some huge orange flames from that building. This is probably, what, a three or four story building there. You just see that plume of smoke we're seeing from one of our cameras across the valley and how big big those flames are there, how big that plume of smoke is. People are going very slow on the 215 to see this. So you, this is right now a traffic nightmare in rush hour as well. Keep you posted as we learn more and get some new information. By the way, this is not too far from the uh, new Durango station that's under construction and across the street is Uncommons, roughly in that area. All right, it's a busy afternoon. We have more breaking news here. A shooting in North Las Vegas, leaving several young people hurt, and we learned that one of them has died. It happened just before 3 o'clock near West Centennial Parkway in Commerce. That is where we find Brian Will with the latest there. Brian. Yeah, we are on West Centennial Parkway near that 400 block where that happened. And right now it's a very active scene as you can see. Law enforcement has shut down this street in both directions and they're working the scene. You see some cones on the ground. Repo initial reports say a possibly gang related shooting. Three people were shot and one is dead. And as you can see, people are still there at working the street. So if you're trying to get around here, this street between Commerce and Revere on West Centennial is shut down in both directions. And law enforcement have been here for at least the past few hours. And we're told initially this, this shooting happened just before 3 p.m. We'll keep you updated. Live in North Las Vegas, Brian Will. 8 News Now. Brian, thank you. A lot going on tonight. We will continue to follow all of these breaking stories for you with live reports coming up on 8 News Now at 6. Catholic Charities, meantime, is highlighting the struggles of refugees today in observance of World Refugee Day. The nonprofit held a cultural resource fair at Clark High School, hoping to educate our community. Now, the free event featured more than 50 different community partners. You're watching the Valley's most accurate forecast on 8 News Now. All right, I'm checking it out. We got one, two, three, four, five tower cams that are tracking that fire and that smoke. This is one of them right now. You can still see the flames, and the color again is still black, indicating it's still on fire. It hasn't been really put out yet as fire crews are trying to put that out. Let's go to the fast cam again because this is the newest shot from a fa fast cam. Can we go to that, guys, real quick and show you what we... We got outside. I wanted to show you the, the flames out there. Look at that one. Like we said, they've closed down that road right next to the 215 as the flames continue to go. And I've got another tower cam I want to show you. Let's go and show you some of the smoke from our Sunset Station tower cam, looking at that fire there, too. Can we go to that, guys, the Sunset Station tower cam and show you the smoke? I mean, really, you could see it all across the valley right now. Even my tower cam on the far west side shows, shows the smoke already drifting over the valley 
too. So this is something we're watching and we're monitoring. We're also water, watching those wind speeds outside too because the winds, when they're really blowing, they can fan and carry some of the flames and some of the embers. 91 degrees outside right now. It's only 4% humidity. That doesn't help either, right? If we had some showers in here, that would help out a lot. Breezy wind still at this hour. Those uh, wind speeds from the southwest sustained around 16 miles per hour. We have seen those gusts around that specific location right around 20 to 25 miles per hour at this hour. And the winds are coming from the southwest. That fire down there in 215 in Buffalo is in the southwest. 84 in Sumlin right now, 90 in Centennial Hills, 91 for downtown, 94 Sunrise Mountain, Green Valley, 93, Southern Highlands, and 92. Can we go to that camera again, guys? We want to show that to you again. We have so many cameras, tower cams. We want to show you that one. There we go. This is that one we wanted to show you from the side. And you can see just how much the smoke is going up in the skies and being carried across the valley right now. We'll check up on the air quality, too. But right now, uh, that is still burning at this hour as crews are trying to get a handle on that. 88 degrees in Prump, 95 for you in Boulder City. Notice we've got this big dip here in the jet stream. We've got warm air within this, but the heat is on the other side of this where we've got this big amplified jet stream. That's in Texas where those guys are having to deal with some extreme heat where the feels like temperatures, the heat indices feel like 115 to 117. Wind speeds are going to still be a, a little breezy for tonight. Notice this is your evening hours at 1030 before 8 news at 11. Ease off a little in the morning and then some breezes for Wednesday, but stronger wind returns we think by the time we get to Thursday. So here's your forecast overnight. Temperatures will be dropping to 69 degrees. That'll be feel great in the morning. We're looking at increased clouds again for tonight. It will be a little breezy at times, unfortunately, but again, so winds are not as strong as they were yesterday where we had that wind alert. We knew today no wind alerts would be issued. 94 degrees for tomorrow, sunny and warmer tomorrow. It will be breezy at times tomorrow. Our normal is 101 for this time of the year. So of course, we'll be below normal for our temperatures tomorrow as we head in the first day of, of summer. That's tomorrow, just before 8 a.m. Here's your most accurate eight day forecast showing you those temperatures below normal. In fact, Friday dropping to 89 degrees. What? Wow. And we'll be temperatures again. will be close to triple digits again by the time we got to Sunday. Certainly triple digits for next week. Let's go back to that tower cam again and show you the flames again. There's some water. I'm getting told there's some water being shot at the flames. You can kind of see it off in the distance there on the, on the left part of your screen there. We're not sure uh, what exactly this is, but from pictures like we talked about, this is, it's possible that this could be a building that is under construction or apartment building that's under construction, but we will verify that for you later on and watch those wind speeds. A News Now, we'll be right back. Stick around. The eight-day forecast on Eight News Now is sponsored by Casablanca. Bingo. I'm ready. All right. Can't water in the middle of the day, ma'am. You'll be fine if you don't change your watering clock. Avoid costly fines this summer. The GMC Sierra with hands-free driving. It rocks. Ordinate 0.9% APR, plus over 1,200 trade assistance and no monthly payments for 90 days on Sierra 5.3 liter V8 light duty models. Melissa Etheridge returns with her summer tour 2023. Friday, July 7th, Pearl Concert Theater at Palms Casino Resort. Melissa Etheridge, live. Performing music from her latest album, One Way Out, available now. And performing her classics. Tickets on sale now at Ticketmaster.com. Melissa Etheridge, in concert. Using meth taught me everything about freedom. Only, not like you think. It taught me how easy it is to lose your freedom. How meth can take control until you find yourself doing whatever meth tells you to do. Before you get there, while you still can, take a stand for yourself. If you feel yourself losing your freedom to meth, ask for help. Accept the help. 
it's worth it. You have the power to be truly free and be the person you want to be. I know. I'm Jan, and I'm free from meth. If you or someone you know is struggling with meth, call 1-800-662-HELP for 24-hour free and confidential treatment referral. Learn more at samsa.gov slash meth. Hello, sir. A witness reported a lot of water running from your property. That's a big fine if it doesn't get fixed. Look familiar? I'd say you've been caught wet-handed. Avoid costly water waste fines. Close captioning is sponsored by Ed Bernstein and Associates. Enough said. Call Ed. True fire. Uh, so we're keeping an eye on that uh, huge fire that is burning just outside the Beltway there between Buffalo and Cimarron. Uh, from some of the photos we've been getting from our viewers, and thank you for that, we've got some close-up looks at what appears to be that this was an apartment building that was under construction. And, and David and Ted, as we take a look at it, that gray smoke is a good sign because yeah. this was a fireball just about 30 minutes right, ago. Right, and you can see if we sort of pivot from these angles from our tower cams, you can see that they are pouring water on this. You see those shooting jets of water, uh, but we're still seeing those orange orange flames there. You can see one of those, what looks like a ladder there on the left side as they're sort of getting this under control, more under control than it was about 45 minutes ago. But Ted, you've been monitoring just how much smoke we're seeing from this. Yeah, and all my tarot cams are actually showing that smoke now drifting over the valley. And you can see the wind direction too. See how that smoke is going a little bit more towards the right part of your screen. The winds are coming from the southwest. It is breezy out there, so we don't have a calm day. Of course, that's a, a problem for firefighters when they try to put out these flames when we get these really gusty winds. Not as strong as yesterday, but still a big problem out there. If you're uh, familiar with this particular area, this is not too far um, from the Durango station that is being built. And then across the way from there is the Uncommons, which is a fairly mm -hmm. new shopping, right. counter, the shopping center in Ikea. So that's kind of the general area we're looking at where there is a lot of construction there going is, on. Yeah, I was just driving by there the other day and thinking some of these buildings have popped up in just the past couple of weeks. Yeah. So it looks like this yeah. is one of them. Of course, we'll keep you posted throughout the evening and find out the latest information coming up at 6 o'clock. Yes, meantime, we will take a short break here. CBS Evening News is coming up next. It's been a busy afternoon. We've got a lot of breaking news. We'll bring it all back to you here at 6 o'clock. Have a good night.